to show you Defendant's Exhibit 198. Do recognize that as a Pleasant Prairie Police Department contact report? That is correct. Like a contact history report, correct? Yeah, that is correct. And that records uh, official business that was recorded between the Jensen home and the Pleasant Prairie Police Department up to the time of Julie Jensen's death, correct? Correct. And let me, sh well, I'll, I'm gonna leave 199 with you and I'll come back to those, come back to those. And that's a list of the, that's the contact history report that's defendant's exhibit, I'm sorry, 198, is that right? That is correct, 198. And we begin with November 30th, 1990, and that's an animal complaint? That's correct. Do you have any idea what that was about? No, I do not. Then we have, on April 6, 1991, a false, a false alarm. Would it be your understanding that that would relate to some sort of like false burglary alarm or something like that? That's what I would assume, yes. On August 13th, 1991, we have the first uh, report of uh, harassment, correct? Correct. And Mrs. Jensen reported that she believed that that was committed by her former lover Perry Tarika, true? Uh, it may have. I'm not familiar with that, with that call. Okay, you would not have been handling a call in 1991, correct? That's correct. You are aware from reviewing your department's reports, however, that in 1990, in, 1990, in January of 1992, Mr. Tarika was cited for harassment, correct? Yes, I do. And that was a case investigated by uh, Officer Hunter, who I think is now Lieutenant Hunter? That is correct. And was, is it your understanding that that was January 1992, that Mr. Tarika was cited for harassment? I believe it was. Now, exhibit, 199 that you have in front of you is a series of uh, incident reports that are clipped together. Is that correct? That's correct. And beginning with this incident on January 27th, 19, 1992, that incident involved, that was investigated by Officer Hunter, correct? Sergeant Mark Hunter, that is correct. And that simply indicates that uh, there was a request about suspicious activity, correct? Uh, I just said suspicious other. Pardon me? The, the fence court is uh, suspicious other. Well, if you look at, I, I'm asking you to take a look at uh, 199, which has the, the incident report. Yes, ask for, uh, 121, which would be Sergeant Hunter's badge number, request this incident for suspicious activity. Okay, and there's nothing else that you know about that January 27th, 1992 contact? <laughs> no, there's none. The next report relates to January 29th, 1992, correct? That's correct. And just two days later, and, and all, all that report says is complainant requests to see responding officer about a suspicious problem, true? Yeah, that's correct. 
January 30, the Jensen's contact, January 30, 1992, someone in the Jensen household had another contact with the Pleasant Prairie Police Department, correct? That is correct. And the subject of that contact was that uh, the department was contacted to be told that the Jensen's would be gone for the weekend, January 31st until February 2nd, and that Lori Coster would have the key to the home, correct? That is correct. So there wasn't any incident reported, they just wanted to let the police department know that they would be out of town. Yes, yeah, so we do vacation home checks. Then February 20th, 1992, that's another report that the Jensen's were going to be on vacation for a couple days, correct? That's correct. The next contact by Julie Jensen was on June 16, 1992. That's correct. And on that date, Julie Jensen reported that a vehicle had been parked across the street from a residence for over a month and had not been moved, correct? That's correct. And it appears from the first page of that report that the, that, that vehicle may have belonged to a Melvin Ashley, correct? That is correct. And are you aware of the Ashleys living across the street from the Jensen's? No, I'm not. You don't know anyone named Ashley? No. The next contact is May 8th. 1993, and what was reported on that day is that the complainants, the Jensen, state they believe someone is entering their residence and moving items, correct? Correct. Do you know anything further about that incident on May 8th, 1993? No, I do not. Do you know whether any fingerprints were taken at that time? No, I, I don't know. And also on that date, there's a request for extra patrol that would appear to relate to the suspicious activity about the items moved in the house, correct? That would be correct. Do you know whether items were actually moved in the house? No, I do not. The next contact on November 4th, 1993, that's your first contact with Julie Jensen, is that right? That is correct. And all that was reported at that time was that there were some annoying phone calls, hangups, and harassment, correct? That is correct. On October 21st, 1994, Julie Jensen called because two black males were selling magazines in her neighborhood, is that right? That's correct. And then the next incident on October 22nd, 1994, Julie Jensen again called the Pleasant Prairie Police Department because there were two black males in her neighborhood selling magazines, correct? That is correct. And that was investigated and, and they were told that they needed to obtain a permit, correct? That is correct. On December 25th, 1994, Julie Jensen called uh, requesting extra patrol because her Christmas lights had been damaged. That is correct. I take it that it's not unusual uh, that kids vandalize Christmas decorations in Pleasant Prairie? Or Unfortunately, anywhere? it's not. A, it seems to be a problem all over. <laughs> okay. Uh, on. January 19th, 1995, there was a request for extra, extra patrol, is that right? Yes. And the report doesn't contain any information concerning what that was all about, correct? No, it does not. It does not even indicate who the investigating officer there was, correct? That is correct. This has uh, basically for all shifts. Just two days later, on January 21st, there was a complaint about a trespass to land, correct? That's correct. And it looks like a Christopher Martin was cited for trespass to land, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Do you recall what that was about? Um, no, I do not. I know Sergeant um, 
Becker investigated it. All right. I just received a <coughs> report. Let me show it to you. And I, I believe I wrote a short supplement on it, but I'm not 100% I'm not positive. Oh, it's uh, trespassing. <coughs> 1995. Let me show you Exhibit 200, Officer Cosman. And if you could just go to the second page, that fax cover page, isn't really necessary. And is it, is it correct that the January 21st contact relates to a, uh, a young man who is driving uh, recklessly over people's lawns and knocking down mailboxes and that kind of thing? That's correct. So that was the January 21st uh, trespass to land. Complaint. Right. And basically what, what happened in, in this particular complaint and why my name is on it, um, Julie Jensen had contacted me the following day, um, at which point I didn't know anything about this particular report. I went back and researched it, found a report and contacted her and basically told her that um, she was not single out, it was not damage done just to theirs, that it was a neighborhood, that several other residences in the neighborhood had also experienced some vandalism, so it was not specifically targeted toward them. Okay. Now, was that the, do you know, was that the case with the Christmas lights and the parked car and the black male selling magazines? Those didn't appear to be specific contacts related to the Jensen's, right? Uh, which ones? The Christmas lights, the black male selling magazines, and the car parked across the street? Well, those were reported by her. That's, right. that's correct, but um, as basically it was just to her of a suspicious nature. Okay. I mean, just uh, those other incidents didn't appear to be targeted at the Jensen's for no. harassment. Definitely not. <clears throat> then we have an incident on May 27th, 1995. Uh, boat well, there's two of them there. Harassment and extra patrol. We don't have any information. There's no report concerning what happened that day? Uh, I don't believe so. Then we move to August 25th, 1995. And there is a report that you wrote regarding uh, activities of that day, correct? That is correct. On direct examination, you were shown a, uh, a, a photograph, correct, by the prosecution, a pornographic photograph? Yes, I was. That relates to this August 24th, 1995 report, correct? August, the August 25th, yes. August 24th? I, just to be clear, I think it's August 24th. Oh, I'm sorry, it's it is 24th. There, it's 25th. Oh, well. I have, well. I have written on, on the 24th. Okay. So there's a little bit of discrepancy between the face sheet and the narrative, narrative report that you wrote. Well, I think what happened here is because there was um, actually a lapse of a couple of days when this occurred and when I was called. Okay. And you, received, you first received a telephone call from Julie Jensen on August 24th, correct? Correct. And what she reported on that date is that she and her husband left their home together at about 7.30 on August 23rd, 1995, correct? That's correct. And she said that when they returned home together 45 minutes later, the garage door was open, right? Correct. And she was positive that the door had been closed when they both left together, correct? Correct. And at this time, she stated that they had been receiving some recent harassing telephone calls, correct? Correct. On this occasion, uh, the Jensen's turned over uh, several photocopies of pornographic pictures that they had found inside the boat, right? Yes. 
and the photograph that had been found on July 3rd, 1995 in, in Mr. Jensen's truck, correct? Correct. And that was on that, it's on, it's a, it's on Kodak paper, correct? The one is correct. Uh, I'm sorry, what, which, which would be the state exhibit? Exhibit, exhibit 190, exhibit 197, correct? Correct. That appears to be a developed photograph. It appears to be. As opposed to being clipped from a magazine or being downloaded or printed from a computer or anything else, it looks like it's a developed photograph. Correct. That photograph, no one would mistake the woman in that photograph for Julie Jensen, right? No. And, and there was no claim that that was Julie Jensen in that photograph. In, that, in that photograph, no. You indicated on direct examination, Officer Cosman, that that was the only photograph that, that had been received that wasn't a photocopy? That is correct. Well, <clears throat> Do you recall an instance in which Mrs. Jensen called you because some photographs had been left that she was confident depicted her? That's correct. There were photographs that depicted her engaged in oral sex? They were not pictures of her, but she felt that they were of her. She reported to, she reported to you that somebody had left photographs of her engaging in oral sex, correct? Uh, engaged in, in having sex. Oh, they were, it was sexual intercourse, not oral sex. I believe so, yes. <laughs> Weren't those photographs? They were the same as all the other in black and white and appeared to have been photocopied. Now when you say they were the same, you mean they were the same, the same picture or white. just the same type? Same type. But Julie Jensen called you and she said, this is a picture of me engaged in sexual intercourse, right? She said she had photographs of that, that is correct. Did she show you those photographs? She had them sealed in an envelope. Did she show you them? No, she did not. You never saw those photographs? I did see them. I advised her. She was very embarrassed about handing the, the pictures over. And when I got back to the department, I opened up the envelope and I looked at the pictures and determined it was not Julie Jensen engaging in, in any kind of sex, that they appeared to be pornographic pictures of the same content in black and white being on regular paper. When you say regular paper, you mean well, meaning like, like this. correct, not something you would see on a, of a back of a developed film, as in the state exhibit. So Julie Jensen asked you not to look at these photographs. Is that right? I advised her that I would have to look at them and see if it was indeed her that was in the photographs. <clears throat> well, let me let me back up and make sure I have this straight. Julie Jensen called you on the phone, first of all, right? Correct. Did she tell you what she wanted when she talked to you on the phone? She asked me if I could stop by and pick up some pictures that she had, um, apparently of her engaged in um, having sexual intercourse and wanted to turn them over to us. When was this? Um, I don't recall the exact date. Is there any report regarding this incident? No, there is not. When you responded to her telephone call, she told you that the photographs were of her engaged in sexual intercourse, correct? And she believed were, correct. She said that she had looked at these photographs and she thought they were her, right? I don't recall if she said she had looked at them or not. Well, I, would, I would assume that she had looked at them, but when she handed them to me, they were in a sealed envelope. And she gave you the sealed envelope and her initial instructions were, I don't want you to look at these, correct? Well, I, I advised her, she asked me if I had to look at them. She did not request that I not look at them. 
Didn't you just tell me that she requested that you not look at them, no, Officer Cosby? If I did, I'm, I'm sorry. I I mistakenly said that because she basically wanted to know actually if they were of her or not. She thought they were. She was embarrassed by the whole situation. Do you know why it is that Julie Jensen could not determine whether it was a photograph of herself engaged in sexual intercourse and that she'd have to ask you? I, I can't offer you an explanation on that. And at least initially she was trying to give you it to you in a sealed envelope so you wouldn't look at them, so you wouldn't be able to confirm it, right? Well, I think she, I don't, I don't know what her logic would have been for first. Basically what she told me is they were photographs given to her by Mark. Now whether she had viewed them or not, I, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure if she actually put them in the envelope or they were given to her that way and she did not look at them. Well, she told you that she thought they were her, right? Yes, she did. And she told you it, it wasn't as though uh, Mark told her that he had made those, right? Correct. She didn't believe that they were photos of her having sex with her husband, right? Right. She believed that they were her having sex with her former lover, right? With someone. Did she tell you that she had more than one affair? She told me of just a, just a one affair. And that was that was with Perry Tarika, correct? That is correct. You did not look at these photographs with Mrs. Jensen? No, I did not. She asked that I not look at them in her presence. She was very embarrassed over her. Well, after you looked at them and concluded that they were not her, didn't you go back to her and show her and say, these aren't you? I called her on the phone. I did not go back. How is it you <clears throat> determined that it was not her when she herself thought that it was her depicted in the photos? Because the very first picture that I saw depicted a man <laughs> on top of a woman engaged in sex. Both the, basically from the middle of the back up to the, to the head of the male were visible. His arms were <laughs> straight, like on the bed and a woman was underneath him looking directly up. So there would have had to have been someone standing above them taking a picture in a downward motion. And with the way she was looking, she would have had to have noticed that someone so, was there taking a picture of her. So you did not conclude that, let me try this again. Your conclusion that this was not Julie Jensen was not based on your view of the woman's face. It was based on that as well. But what you what you just told me is that your conclusion was based on the camera angle, well, right? On the camera angle and the fact that in, in the rest of looking at the rest of the photographs, they appeared to be close, but they were not all of the same woman. So they were in. They were not, in, in the other photographs that were depicted, they were definitely not Julie Jensen. Well, Julie, <coughs> Julie Jensen had these photographs in her possession, true? Objection, this has been asked and answered several times. It's foundation. Well, it's pretty clear that, that she did. Yep. <clears throat> Ask a question. Julie Jensen believed it was her. Objection, right? asked and answered. Several times it's been asked and answered. Uh, it does seem to be abundantly clear from the record. Did you save these photographs so anybody else could determine whether this was Julie Jensen like she thought it was? No, I did not. A camera could have been set up at that angle in her home when she was having sex with her lover, true? It would have had to have been hung from the ceiling. Well, there would be other ways to have that camera above them, correct? I'm not, I, I'm not sure what you're driving at, Fonsa. 
And you don't know whether her former lover set up such a camera, correct? No, I don't know that for a fact. You weren't there, right? That's correct. And Julie Jensen would have seen the same camera angle as you, right? Right? I'm sorry? Julie Jensen would have seen that the photograph was from the same camera angle as you did, correct? Correct. And she was a smart woman, right? I felt she was. And she didn't figure out on her own? And again, I'm not 100% positive that she viewed these pictures. In 2002, the defense, defense counsel requested that you provide any photographs that you have uh, relating to any other harassment, correct? That is correct. And the first time any photograph was produced was the photograph that's one, uh, is exhibit 197. That's the first, that's the only photograph that's been produced, correct? That's correct. And that was not produced until August of 2007? That's correct. So it took over five years to find that photograph? Yes. And no other photographs exist? No. They were entered into evidence because there are indications. This one as well with the report I did, uh, the bottom line reads off my report, all photos were placed in evidence under PR number 2008. And apparently that's the only photograph that was kept for whatever reason. October 7th, 1995, there's another report involving your department from Julie Jensen. Is that correct? October 7th of 95. One I have here is August 25th, and the next one after that is um, October 6th. I'm, I'm sorry, you have when August? You August 25th, that was relating to the last. That was the one, it. right. And then we have October 7th, 1995. True? I don't have a copy of that report here. After the narrative report. This is the last one I had, which is August 25th. That's the next page. And then the next one after that is October 8th. Yeah, October. Or October 6th. Yeah, October 6th. That's what I'm asking about. Okay. <clears throat> well, you can. <clears throat> You can see that on the uh, exhibit behind you, it says October 7th, and I guess it says involvement, October 7th, October 7th, 1995, on the one-page report that you have associated with that? Yes. And that was uh, investigated by Officer Paul of your department? Yes, that's and the officer that was assigned. Okay, and that's just a house property check? Yes. Do you know, have any idea what that was regarding? Yeah, it may have, I don't know. It may have just been that he called out on, that he was on an extra patrol on it at that particular time. Now, the next, the next incident reported was on February 13th, 1996, correct? Correct. And that was investigated by yourself and Sergeant Ratsburg, true? Correct. And on that occasion, 
Julie Jensen called Ameritech, right? Um, I'm sorry, it looks I, like... I believe... I believe at that point that um, Detective Rasberg had called Ameritech. Okay. And what had happened was there was a trace on the phone at that time, correct? I'm not aware if it was a, a trace or at that particular point if we were able to contact Ameritech and have them look up a, you know, a, a particular call that occurred on whatever date at whatever time. Julie Jensen, had that Julie Jensen had reported that their home had received a harassing phone call, correct? A prank call, correct. And they reported the phone number from that harassing phone call, correct? Ameritech did, apparently. Okay. And a, there was a phone number associated with that, correct? That's correct. It established that somebody had made a telephone call to their number at that time, correct? Correct. Someone uh, from the residence of Tina Thomas, correct? It appears that way. And then there was an investigation and, and nothing happened as a result of that investigation, correct? That appears so. And certainly there is no connection to Mr. Jensen making that phone call in that instance, right? Yeah, that's correct. There was actually another telephone number that was established as being the source of that phone call, right? That's correct. <clears throat> On February 16th, there's a, a request for extra parole, patrol rather, that, parole. That, could be, that could be just for vacation. Vacation Maybe. home check or uh, may have been more photographs that had been found. It, it could have been for anything. August 12th, 1996, we have another request for extra patrol. Is that right? That is correct. And that again may have just been for vacation type thing, right? I'm sorry? That again may have been just for a vacation type situation? That's correct. And then these last two contacts are the contacts that you've testified about that relate uh, to your going to Mrs. Jensen's house after she left the voicemail, right? Correct. And December 3rd, 1998, which is the date that Mrs. Jensen passed away. I for don't have those here, but I would, I would assume that is, that is correct. Well, you, you know that December 3rd, 1998 yes. was the yes. day she passed away. That was the last. Are you aware, Officer Cosman, that um, during the search of the Jensen home that Julie Jensen had logs indicating that she reported phone calls during the period of that tracing equipment was put on the telephone line. I was advised that she she had kept notes. Are are you aware that of whether those notes reflect that telephone calls were made during the time tracing equipment was on the phone? Um, I don't believe that. Uh, basically, the, the log that she kept indicated all calls. And I think there may have been gaps in there where she had traces put on where, the, where she didn't receive any calls. Most of the calls that she did receive, that she did log, in my belief, is were either hang-ups or um, something of a nature where she didn't know the person that she was talking to or the person who had actually called. That is, she... <coughs> She logged a number of instances in which she picked up the phone and there was dead air or somebody hung up, something like that. Correct. And in your experience, that isn't unusual that any of us might get calls where there's dead air or hang up, correct? Correct. But she logged all those over a period of time. Correct. But are you, <clears throat> did you examine those? that information? No, I did not. Okay. So you don't know if calls were received during the time tracing equipment was on? No, I do not. Did you ever get local telephone records from Ameritech to show uh, 
to, to try to establish whether calls had been made? No, I did not. Do you know whether at that time uh, Ameritech or whoever was, was it your understanding that Ameritech was the local I believe it provider? was at that time. Did you know whether Ameritech as the local phone provider could obtain uh, phone records that originated in some other area code or state? No, it would have to be within the same. That was my understanding. It would have to be within the same state. So if she was receiving harassing telephone calls from Illinois, they wouldn't be able to get those records of those calls? It would be, I, I believe my understanding was it would be stated like something out of the area or something similar to that to where they wouldn't be able to trace where it, where it originated from. So an out of, your understanding was an out of area call would relate to some, some call from a, a different state or a different area code or either one? I would assume it would be a different state. At any time, did you try to take any fingerprints from any of these photographs that had been placed at the Jensen's? No, I did not. Did you ever actually try to install a, a wire tap to see to record calls that came in? No, we did not. Did you ever try to stake out Mr. Jensen's place of employment to see if someone came and left a photograph on the truck? No, I did not. It's fair to say that any leaving of photos was pretty sporadic, right? Correct. It wasn't a daily thing by any means, right? No, it was not. I presume your office would not have had the resources to maybe wait a month to see if somebody left a photograph on, a, on his vehicle? No, he wouldn't. It also, you're aware that it would be pretty expensive to hire a private investigator to do the same thing, correct? That's correct, though we did suggest that to them. You can understand how the expense would really roll up if they had to wait 30 days or something before a photograph showed up on the truck. Oh, right? absolutely. Did you, you never talk to the neighbors after having this conversation with Julie Jensen? No, I did not. Did you ever talk to Perry Tarika, Julie Jensen's former lover, in person? No, I have not, not up until knowing that he was here. I, other than that, this first time I had talked to him was yesterday. I'd never talked to him beforehand. Whether in full, on the phone, in person, anything else until yesterday? That is correct. That's more than 10 years since the last time something had been reported in, in, in the nature of harassment at the Jensen home, correct? Correct. Did you ever check with the people who worked at Mark's office to see if they had seen anything? No, I did not. Did you ever check phone records for Mark at his office? No, we did not. Our understanding was there were, there were uh, numerous lines from that office that would have been very hard to get uh, the records of. Well, did you try at all? I believe, I believe someone did. I'm not exactly sure who, but I, I recall being told that. At any rate, you're not aware of any records ever being obtained for the phones, correct? That is correct. I take it that Exhibit 197, you don't have any evidence that Mr. Mr. Jensen obtained this photograph, right? No, I don't, do not, other than the fact that um, it was given to me on that date by, by Julie Jensen. And they told you that this had been left on his, on his truck, right? That is correct. Did you ever, at that time in 1998, there were uh, several um, stores that specialized in selling pornographic items in the Kenosha area? There were stores. In Kenosha County? Yes. On I-94 and on Highway 32? Yes. And uh, did you check with any of those stores to see if they had any materials like this or like any of the other materials that you had? No, I did not. <clears throat> and out of all these particular acts of, of harassment that were reported to you, 
Can you identify one single incident that you have proof that Mark Jensen committed? No. All I have is suspicion. Based in, the only the only fact, if you want to call it a fact, would be that whenever we put a trace on the line, the phone calls would mysteriously stop. And it was only three of us, three people that knew that a trace was being put on the phone. That was my own, and that, that's what basically gave me a suspicion. But as far as proof, no. And as to the photographs, you have absolutely nothing, right? Correct. Your only source of information as to whether Julie Jensen told Mark Jensen was Julie Jensen, right? Correct. You didn't ask Mark if Julie told him, right? That is correct. You didn't check to see whether uh, her reports indicate that some calls were received during the trace, correct? Correct. As you've acknowledged, many of these telephone calls were nothing more than hang-up calls, correct? Correct. And when there was an out-of-area call, whether there was a trace or not, there was no way to determine where it came from, correct? Correct. So that was an additional problem in terms of your being able to track source of calls, correct? Correct. You are aware that when she logged these things, there were a substantial number of out-of-area calls, true? Correct. Did you ever try to contact Illinois authorities to see whether they'd be able to assist in determining whether the calls originated there? No, I did not. That's all I have. Hey, Direct. I forgot the exhibit. Did you have these? Um, what were the reports? What was the exhibit of the reports? Oh. Uh, I think 198 and 199. Uh, do you still have those? Uh, I have them on my desk. Well, yeah, I have those in front of you. The, um, all the reports, the packet reports. Yes, sir. Turn to the one uh, for August 25th, 1985, please. Which one? August 25th, 1995. Take the time reporting. Jensen spoke to you? Um, I received a call from Julie Jensen, correct. Well, when she was speaking to you and you responded, yes. she didn't say we found the photo. No, she, she no, she said the market phone number. <coughs> she said her husband had found the photo. That's correct. correct. Tell us what well, do you remember what she said to you because without looking at the report? Is it basically market phone photographs? Well, it reads here later that day, her husband. Objection to read the report. Sustained. Okay. At the time that she prepared this report, was the matter still fresh in your mind? Yeah, it was at that point, yes. Okay, read it now, please, to yourself. Oh, where is it in? Well, uh, start at the second paragraph, though. Uh, one begins to read. RO did respond.
Okay, she she basically advised me that um, her husband had gone out to the garage to work on a boat and found photos in the boat. And she also gave me one that appeared to be uh, developed that her husband had found on his truck. On his truck or in his truck? In his truck. On July 3rd, 1995? That is correct. And that's this photograph that has been marked as Exhibit 197? That is correct. And it, the handwriting on the back there says 7385 7, found, 7385 in truck. That's whose handwriting is that? It appears to be Julie Johnson's handwriting. <coughs> and over the years, as you responded to these complaints of, about the photos in particular, um, was it predominantly photos that Mark Jensen had recovered or photographs that Julie had found? Um, they were basically what, what Julia told me is that her husband had fallen photographs around the residence being outside near the garage, the front door, on the deck, and even in her shed in the backyard. Julia, Julia Jensen had told me that her husband had fallen. I don't recall her ever telling me that she had fallen. And as far as these harassing phone calls, were they all hang up phone calls or did she complain about any other types of phone calls? To her they were all basically just hang up calls or someone would, would not say anything, there would not be any noise in the background, there wouldn't be any other heavy, heavy breathing or anything like that. Um, at times they were just hang up or dead space and she would hang up on them. That's when she answered the phone. Were there, did she ever complain of any instances where her husband answered the phone and complained of any speaking? She, she had advised me that Mark, her, her husband had received calls at work where he had discussions with a particular person of whom they did not know who it was. Now at the outset of these um, harassing phone call activities and harassing activities, you had told Julie to keep a lock? Yes, I did. And did she keep that lock? Yes, she did. Did she show you that lock from time to time? Um, no, she did not. I think rather good. Any question? In terms of uh, who found the photographs, that's information you received from Julie, correct? Correct. In terms of what happened when she answered telephone calls, that was information you received from Julie, correct? That is correct. And she was keeping tabs not just on hang-up calls, but anytime somebody had a wrong number, uh, right? That would be something else you'd keep track of? I found it out afterwards, yes. <clears throat> she kept track of any phone call that wasn't um, obviously for one of the Jensen's, basically, right? That is correct. Those hang-up calls happened at all times of the day? Mostly during the day when uh, she was home alone. They happened at all times of the day. She recorded hang-up calls, right? Right. <clears throat> That's all. Any questions? Down any further. You may speak down. Simple operation, you can stand with me for 30 minutes. Oh, I'd rather wait about 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs>